What's up guys, Dustin here, Adam Off-Road. Thanks for stopping by and checking out the channel. Hope everyone's having a good day. Uh, got another little installation project going on on the Jeep Wrangler TJ. The upper control arms are starting to go out. They make a loud popping noise um, when the Jeep is at a full stop and I go to accelerate. Um, getting a lot of clunking noise in the rear end. Today, we're gonna go ahead and remove those, uh, adjust the pinion angles. I'm gonna kind of walk you through the steps on how I do it uh, using a cell phone. And then um, once we have those all set up, I'll go ahead and lock those down with the new control arms and get everything buttoned up and tightened up. So that's the objective. Let's get under the Jeep and get to work. Stay tuned. Okay guys, so in my situation, we're just replacing upper control arms. There may be a situation where you're doing a rear axle swap or you're doing a SYE kit install, you're lifting the Jeep, you need to correct the drive angles. In this case, we're just replacing bad upper control arms. So I just have my jack right here. It's like a five ton, six ton bottle jack. And I have my little saddle adapter for that. And it's holding up the pinion flange because when you unbolt the upper control arms uh, this thing can rotate downward the weight of the pinion the the axle housing will come down um, it won't fall to the ground because it's bolted to the drive shaft so you're good there but i just have a bottle jack supporting it because we're going to be using this bottle jack to move the pinion up and down to find the sweet spot where i want it to be um, permanently set I'm just going to start moving it up until I can see with my eye that the pinion is starting to be in line and straight with the drive shaft. So you can see how it's moving up and then we're going to verify all the angles right now. Okay, so here I have two different tools we're going to use. I'm going to show you how to use them both. But uh, this is a rigid app right here. This is my cell phone. And we just downloaded the app. It's called Rigid Digital Level. And we're not going to really pay attention to the red line. We're looking at this solid line between the dark and the gray, lighter gray shades. This is the line we're looking at. And basically, it gives you a whole number in degrees. I don't know if you can see that. And there's a, also a lock button right there where you can lock the, the uh, setting down. Um, so when you move your phone away from the drive shaft, you just hit the lock button and then you can read it. Um, that's pretty convenient, but it's basically just a, basically a very simple angle finder that we're gonna use. I'm also gonna use this one for accuracy. I really like accuracy. This one cost me about $29. It's made by Klein Tools and um, it has a magnetic base and it's kinda, um, uh, tapered right here so you can set it on pipe. I like to use this for bending conduit But basically you turn it on and then you can set it on the drive shaft So right now I'm gonna set it on the drive shaft and I'm getting about three thirteen point five on the angles So you can see thirteen and a half and then for the phone I'm just gonna set it right here and I'm getting a 14. So let me let me go ahead and lock that down and as you can see i'm getting a whole number 14. so now i'm going to take you back over to the pinion and we'll go ahead and measure over there okay so in the back on the other side of the rear end is your axle housing and axle housing cover you're going to locate this flat machine surface right here this is where we like to measure the pinion angles so we've already measured just as a recap, the drive shaft, which was at 13 and a half, the rear pinion angle um, is going to be with the Klein Digital Finder, a 12 and a half. So I have a 13 and a half on the drive shaft and a 12 and a half, as you can see, on my pinion angle. So that's gonna be a difference of one degree and that'll give us um, efficient lubrication at the U-joint. So I'm gonna go ahead and leave it right there. I really like 12 and a half. So now I'm just gonna take my cell phone and set it up to here and I'm getting a 13. So I'm gonna lock that down. And as you can see on the phone, I don't know if you could see that, a whole number of 13. So over there I was getting 14 and here I'm getting a 13. 
So that is the difference between one degree on both the cell phone and the digital finder. I really, really like this setup. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and lock it down right now. We're gonna go ahead and finish installing these upper control arms and I'll kind of just walk you through the steps. So I hope you guys get the idea. Let's go ahead and install those upper control arms. Okay guys, so now I have the Rubicon Express upper control arms installed on the axle side. I don't have it torqued down, just got the bolts loosely mounted up into the weldment. And now I'm gonna bring up this side to the frame side mount. There's a jam nut right here. Let me go ahead and loosen that up. So basically, this joint rotates on a thread, a threaded shaft, and you can thread it in or out like so. And there's a jam nut to lock this setting down. So you can turn it in or you can turn it out wherever the hole lines up with uh, the bolt. So basically I'm just going, going to try this setting and if the bolt slips through like that, that's where you want to have, have it set. And it just so happened to be the Zerk fitting is down so I can easily grease this uh, super flex joint um, with the fitting in the down position. I could turn it this way and see if that setting works. That one, that one also works as well. But I like the fact that I'm in more and the Zerk is down. So maybe I can try to go in one more time and I can't without actually having to force it. So I'm just going to go ahead and leave it at this setting right here because I like how the bolt goes through all the way through both, uh, both sides of the weldment and the Zerk fittings down. So I'm going to go ahead and lock the jam nut down right there and there's a nut on the back side. Go ahead and thread that in like that and then I'll torque this bolt to 55 foot-pounds and then I'm gonna come back to this the axle side and bolt that bolt up to 55 foot-pounds as, as well. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, tighten up this jam nut and there's no real torque setting for this jam nut um, so I'm just gonna use a crescent wrench and go over the top with it and I'm gonna tighten it to what I call hella tight and that's gonna be it. So we're gonna repeat these same steps over here to the other side, the passenger side, and uh, we'll go ahead and recheck the drive shaft and pinion angles. And I'm just gonna go ahead and loosen up the bottle jack and remove the bottle jack. And then we'll go ahead and check the final adjustment. All right, so we're back here at the drive shaft. I'm gonna go ahead and set up the angle finder and right now we're sitting at about 13.4 13.5 there it is 13.5 on the drive shaft so let's go back to the pinion okay so now we're back at the pinion we're going to go ahead and check the uh, final adjustments on the pinion angles and those are going to be at a 12. so i have 13.5 on the drive shaft and a 12 on the pinion we have a difference of one and a half okay guys I just wanted to recap and share with you some um, technical information on why I set this pinion one and a half degrees below the drive shaft angle and just kind of talk about the relationship between the two and why we want to do this so for instance if we had a straight line and the pinion and the drive shaft were perfectly um, in a straight line what could possibly happen is the U-joint, which is also a bearing, the trunnions in this U-joint or bearing could stagnate and would not um, actually be a bearing at that point, and uh, it doesn't facilitate good lubrication. So that's the main reason why we want to set the pinion lower or in a negative angle than the drive shaft to facilitate good lubrication. That's the only reason why. So that is why there is a magic number. That's why. And that magic number is between one and three. So you want to drop this a negative one between a negative one to three degrees below the, the drive shaft relationship. And that helps uh, facilitate good lubrication here at this bearing. 
So right now I'm sitting at a 13 and a half here and a 12 and a half on the pinion. We have a one and a half negative difference between in the relationship between the drive shaft and the pinion. I really like this setup. I'm going to leave it alone. I've actually taken it around the block already and I have no vibrations or anything. If you are experiencing some kind of vibrations, um, you might want to check your U joints, but um, there is some wiggle room. You have one to three degrees between zero and three degrees off of you the angle of your drive shaft now just keep that in mind that your drive shaft angles can look totally different from mine you just want to make sure that they're one to three difference in, in anywhere in between one to three difference or or zero I mean you can do a zero which is fine um, have the pinion angle exactly matched up to the drive shaft angle that is totally fine um, if that's at, it, what you have to do to absolutely um, take away any vibrations you may be encountering. So there's some wiggle room and um, you're just going to have to play with it for the scenario of your Jeep. But uh, I hope, hope this was helpful and uh, just, my, uh, just my thoughts on the upper control arm replacement. So guys, it's pretty much going to wrap it up for the installation of those new upper control arms in relationship to adjusting the rear pinion angles. I had a lot of fun doing that and sharing you guys how I install those and get all that set up and locked down. I'm going to go ahead and list all the parts in the description box below, all the materials and tools that I'm using. Go ahead and check that out. If you have any comments, feel free to ask me anything in the comment box below. And uh, if you can, hit that like button. If you see value in this video, hit that like button. That would be much appreciated. It'll get more exposure out there on YouTube. And uh, consider subscribing. It helps out the channel. And check out some other videos that may be helpful to you. And uh, we will see you guys on the next Jeep video. Have a good day. Peace out. Peace.